Welcome back to the Star Wars News Nets YouTube channel. Thank you for watching or listening. If you're joining us on Apple and Spotify, like and subscribe to the channel. Leave us a little review on Apple, Spotify. Let us know what you think. I'm joined today with my good friend Luke, as always now. And today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. This was actually an idea that my father kind of had that I took and twisted around a little bit and then said, Luke, please share your creative genius with me because I'm not very good at this kind of stuff. And we're going to be calling these the missions of the month. Obviously, a mission every month, one episode, a special episode that you're going to get where Luke is going to come up with these elaborate plans uh, for Star Wars, like these elaborate missions set in different timelines, different eras. Maybe we'll cross eras at some point. And the two of us are going to basically compete in a draft to pick the teams to complete these missions in the best possible way. So, for instance, let me read you this week's or this month's mission so you can kind of get a grip of what we're going to be doing. Here we go. I'm going to use my mission voice. This is going to be like my my version Admiral of Yularen Admiral Yularen. Yes. Yeah. This is like my version of Admiral Yular and Clone Wars. All right. I've been I've been working on this. I've been working on this. I'm really excited. Okay, mission of the month. The setting is 20 BBY. You have been hired by a reputable shipping agency for a package delivery out to the outer rim. Someone has been illegally harboring small, and I love this, and big cats here on Corellia. There are six animals in total for your transportation mission. Three Tuka cats, one Loth cat, and two Targans. Shout out to Chancellor So from the High Republic, I'm guessing. They need brought back to a planet where they can be in the wild and have room to roam. They deserve a peaceful life. So we must put together a crew that knows the way to Sorgan. If you don't remember what Sorgan is, think about Mando Season 1, Episode 4. That's the planet Sorgan. Okay? That's the drop-off spot. You will definitely have to cross through some Separatist-controlled airspaces, as well as a potential threat of a pirate gang or two. You'll need someone who is a great pilot to get you to your destination. You'll want a smooth-talking co-pilot to talk your way out of potential skirmishes with the pilots. You'll want someone great with weapon systems in case the Separatists aren't willing to let you go freely. And lastly, you'll want someone great with animals to keep them at bay during the adventure. So 20 BBY, we're in the heart of the Clone Wars era, heart basically. In the heart of it. We have four spots to fill. You have to find a great pilot that's going to get us there. You need a co-pilot. That's the smooth talking co-pilot. Someone to, you know, talk our way out of some problems. <laughs> we need someone great with weapon systems, you know, that's going to be able to blow things up, take things out effectively. And then lastly, we need someone great with animals because we don't want the cats taking advantage of our hospitality and turning our ship to their own private little jungle. Um, so, Luke. We did the draft offline. We have our picks. We're ready to go. Before we get started, how do we feel about our team? Are we feeling like we're going to complete this mission at a high level? I think uh, my team is going to be able to barely complete this. Um, I love I love when Star Wars stories like barely scrape across the finish line, like uh, Anakin and Obi Wan, right? Landing the ship with Palpatine in it at the beginning of Revenge of the Sith. My favorite. Another happy landing. Another happy landing. <laughs> so your your goal here was survival. It wasn't like Just, necessarily efficiency. It was survival. It's not going to be flashy or great, but the job will be done. <laughs> we're going to get paid and we're going to have a good time doing it. So I have to say mine is more about vibes. We went straight vibes on our mission and we're about to find out. So the show began. Here we go. First pick. You had the first pick in the draft, and you went with weapon systems first, and you took you took the mighty Chewbacca to help you complete your mission. So explain to me, why, why was Chewbacca the first pick off the board here? I feel like, so he was an easy one for me. Uh, pretty much every scene we've ever seen him in, um, he's ready to just beat someone up. He's... <laughs> 
he's <laughs> always ready to like throw hands. He's very calm in nature, but like he's got that in him. He's got that mm. dog in him. He's got that. Um, dog in him. Some might say Wookiees are giant dogs. I mean, some do. He was based on a dog that George Lucas, you know, had in his mind. So, um, yeah, his his bowcaster is it's going to send people to orbit. We've already seen that. It just destroys people. So I think he's just good with weapons. He's good with melee. He's, he's good with the trigger in his hand. So, mm-hmm. uh, and he's flying around with Han Solo all the time. Right. We see later in his life. Hold on, hold on BBY. though. 20 BBY. He's not flying around so with Han yet. He's he hasn't actually done giving, all of that. He's yet, about to actually give Yoda. Is. <laughs> That's fair. We know what his potential is. We actually know he's about to give Yoda a hug here in about a year or two. He is. Uh, yeah. Here in, here in a couple a months away. He's a couple uh, months away. Yeah. So I just feel like he's very solid with uh, aiming, with triggers, with uh, weapon systems in general. Any weapon you want to give him, mm-hmm. he's solid. So, yeah. So, of course, I'm I could take him on think, my team. So, I thought that was an interesting pick. I love the pick. But I did think it was interesting considering where we know Chewie the best is probably as a co pilot. Now, the True. problem with the co pilot for our mission is we needed a smooth talking co pilot. And there's probably not very many uh, alien species or humanoids that speak Shrewook. And Shrewook, so it might yes. have been difficult for Chewie to be the smooth talking co pilot. Not that he's not sense. smooth talking. <laughs> not that he's not smooth talking. Are you able to do a like a Wookiee growl? Is that something you're gifted in? Because I'm not. Nah, I don't know. Okay, no, no, <laughs> cut, we're cutting that. We're cutting that. Yeah. So you went weapon systems first. So obviously my next pick, I'm not going to go weapon systems because I know you're not going to be picking anyone from weapon systems again. So I went with the number one person that I wanted to pick that was on my board. I went with the smooth talking co-pilot, the position that I felt was most important to get this mission done. And I went with none other than the great Hondo Onaka pirate king Mm. himself at this time he's at the peak of his pirates days basically here in night in 20 bby yeah he has connections to pirates so we know that we might encounter some pirates he has dealt with both the republic and separatists to some degree now you might argue that this would come back to hurt the squad considering he's double crossed all these people at least twice like two or three times. However, if there's one thing though about Hondo that we know from Clone Wars, but the rest of his time, you know, like you said, we know his potential. He always weasels his way out of a situation. Like he always Always. manages to come out the other side, maybe not better off, but he at least survives. So I'm like, give me Hondo. I'm there for the vibes. I'm there for the journey that he's going to take me on. I was like, what group of people would also make the most like off the wall, entertaining episode of Clone Wars. And so I'm like, I need, I need Hondo as a part of this. I need captain Jack Sparrow of star Wars here. So that's why I went Hondo as my co-pilots. What what were your, what are your thoughts? Like I Hondo in general. I mean, if you're going for vibes, that is the correct objective, correct choice. The vibes (laughs) are immaculate with Hondo. I, I often just walk around the house doing my own little like <laughs> impressions, like ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> my favorite Hondo Bro. moment would be when Ezra lies to him in Rebels about being yes. like a like Lando. I was just about to do that one, and and he just says he's like, "You lied to me. I am so proud of you." <laughs> it's like I knew <laughs> yeah. I liked you. It's so good. I knew I liked you. <laughs> I knew I liked you. Oh, it was so good, and. Hondo, he just there's just whatever it is about Hondo. I don't know. I've always been drawn to Hondo. I like Rebels Hondo more because he's more of this like, yeah, not really, like he's more of a wholesome figure. I think his vibes and, are heightened. Yes, Rebels. the vibes, the vibes are heightened. So that brought us to the third pick in the draft here. Okay, third pick. You know, you're having to make a move. You know that I'm not going to be selecting a code pilot. You already have your weapon systems. You are in with Chewie. We're trying to fill out the crew. You went with pilot which some might argue is also maybe the most important. And you must say C-10, Jedi Master, say C-10, C-10, who I haven't read The Living Force yet, but I've heard is, you know, prominent in that book. I'll have to be honest. I, you're going to have to sell me on this. And I know a lot of this you're going to get into has to do with like his species and some of his upbringing and, and that. You're going to have to sell me on this because my one image that I remember of say C-10 is how he couldn't last more than five seconds against the Emperor um, in Revenge of the Sith. So you're going to, you're going to have to, you have to sell me on this one. But that is not flying. Maybe <laughs> he's true. not great against the Emperor in a lightsaber duel. So 
sue me, but hey, that's not in a ship. <laughs> okay. You're saying that um, if him and Palpatine were doing a dog fight, then it would have been over. Like oh, over in seconds. Stacey over Tan second. solos. Um, uh, anyways, I was doing a little bit of research on the Iktachi species, which is his species. And um, yeah. I was trying to find if they were just good pilots naturally. And I don't, I don't think that's the case. It's just him. Uh, personally, he's had just a good history with uh, flying, with piloting with uh ships in general and i also have not read the living force yet but i do know some stuff and i know that he okay. is always tinkering around in that book with his ship he's at this uh he's just at peace when he's in the garage working on okay. his like car so um he's like he's a car guy at heart and um of course you want that guy at the wheel um, okay and we see a lot of a lot of we see some good piloting skills from him in the 2008 Clone War series. Uh, he's okay. got his own cool looking um, Delta Seven fighter, I think is what it's called. I'm yes. not sure on that, but it looks cool. He does some it. real cool corkscrewing, flipping around. He's uh, he obviously makes it through all the Clone Wars, and there's a lot of dog fighting in those. So, um, eh, well, and I think they even mentioned pale. that when they're talking in the Jedi chambers about how, like, I think you need to take the, uh, you know flight squad and okay help us out with this mission so um i just thought he was a kind of an off the wall choice i love my niche character so i just wanted to throw one in there that's just like random no of um, course and it's a jedi master a lot of people don't so, know his name so well, like well, you know we'll put him in here on the video so they'll know they'll, they'll let, yeah i'm sure most people will recognize say c10 if they for because sure. in revenge of the sith if for nothing nothing else, you're like, oh, that's the guy that, that is you know, the guy <laughs> that lost so quickly. And you best believe, instead of editing in a video of Stacey Tim flying in the Clone Wars, I'm totally gonna edit in uh Stacey Tim getting <laughs> whipped by the yeah. Emperor at some yeah. point in time. But no, I, I respect it. It's I love like when we get into some of the the deep lore of like these random characters and diving yeah. into some of that is always is always fun. So your weapons, you got Chewy, Pilot is Sacy Tin. So we're going back to me now. I got the fourth pick. I went with Hondo as my co-pilot. This was probably the worst pick in the draft. And I did this early. <laughs> I was I was worried that he that you were gonna go with this character. And I, I realize now I should not have been worried at all because there's no reason that uh any logical, coherent, rational minded person would select jar jar binks to be the animal caretaker on the mission now for mm -hmm. those of you watching do, or listening sorry not to uh you know call out you you two or you audible gosh audio listeners out there jar here's i'm gonna sell you on jar jar i'm gonna sell you okay please do. jar jar has a natural disposition that is very i would say somewhat endearing to the people around him i don't think anyone has a deep loathing of Jar Jar. There might be people that are annoyed with Jar Jar and he gets under their skin, but I don't think anyone's like in the star Wars universe. I hate Jar Jar Binks. Okay. So you want someone there that is going to, I maybe bring some relief to the group in some capacity. Jar Jar is very compassionate and we've seen him connect with animals before. And I, I think back to that Clone Wars, like season one episode where him and Padme are going and she's going to visit Uncle Ono to try to get them to, to join in with the Republic. He's oh, going to talk about a good point. Relief yes, supplies. Right. And Jar Jar, Padme is captured by the separatists who uncle ono senator ono has already made a deal with the separatists and new gunray and they've taken over the planet and they wanted padme basically as the prize and so padme's captured and jar jar is tasked with the you know mission of freeing padme and getting them out and how does he do this he bonds with this giant like sea monster slug giant sea thing. slug creature that basically he gets this sea creature to come out of the water and take out like all the separatists and fight them all to where they thought that Jar Jar was a Jedi because he's wearing the Jedi robe, but he's like riding on the sea creature. And they to the point where they're like, oh, my gosh, like he must be a Jedi master. And if Jar Jar can connect with a giant sea slug to take out separatists, I'm sure 
that he can connect with these cats and get our Tuka cats, our Targons, and our Loth cats to Sorghum. The only issue, of course, is that he might accidentally let them out of their, you know, room on the ship or their cages, and suddenly they're taking over the ship, or he might accidentally eject them into space um, oh, no. <laughs> by accident and kill the cats that we're trying to take to a peaceful life. That all of this is true. It's also true that if we encounter the separatists or pirates, he accidentally sabotages the ship and gets us captured. I'm not trying <laughs> to say that Jar Jar is without risk, but I'm trying to say that for once again, entertaining Clone Wars episode vibes and overall, I think he can connect with animals. Jar Jar Binks, your animal caretaker on this mission. Now, he was banished from Otogunga for being clumsy. Yeah, so, yes, what, he's not without his risk. But how did that story end? He came back as a bombad general. He was a bombad general because, once he again, we see him. Home. He brought the Naboo and the Gungans together, as they said, <laughs> and... I'll, I'll take the final word on this. If uh, Boss Nass were here and he heard my pick, all he would do is just go, hmm, like, you yes. know what I'm saying? And we're good to go. So, Jar Jar, I know it comes with risk, Luke. I know. But you got to bear with me here. His vibes are there. The vibes Absolutely. Are there. I would watch that episode twice. <laughs> you would watch that twice. Once because you're like, what the hell just happened? And then the second time you're like, okay, now that I know what's going on, like I'll I'll go ahead and settle in here. So <laughs> that brings us to we're in the last half of the draft now with the fifth pick. You have your weapons as Chewie, your pilot Stacey 10, and you went with your co-pilot here. And uh, <laughs> the people have decided um, on this one. And you went with none other than CO Bibble. For those of you who do not know who CO Bibble is, think of the governor from Naboo that says, loss of communication can only mean one thing, invasion <laughs> from Phantom Menace, okay? So, Luke, tell me, CO Bibble. I why? will have to sell you on this one pretty hard, I understand. And I might yes. not do it. Okay. <laughs> but I You're off to a great start selling I me. Think hey, I'm going to sell hilarious. you something It's probably okay. not going to work, you know? <laughs> I think he's... Ho I laugh so much when I watch right. The Phantom Menace, and he's... He's so animated with like um, the message that he's coerced mm. to send where he's like, you must contact me. Our people are <laughs> suffering. Um, and we need a smooth talking co-pilot. We need someone he's, to. He's very. I mean, I might have. I might have responded. I might not have had <laughs> Obi-Wan's insight. I would have been like, oh, my gosh, he's right. He's he's persuading me that I need to like respond so you you just invited darth maul to your house and to, to kill you is what you just said um i think he's persuasive in his own way mm -hmm. um and i i think he's kind of funny in his own way he's mm -hmm. he's cool to be around so i Clearly think he got elected trouble, governor yeah so obviously you know he's a he's a good person he's got a good heart so mm -hmm. um i think his integrity his uh his manner of speaking with people is going to help us out if we need to get ourselves out of a situation that words can do. So okay. uh, I need, I need his brain. You need Working his brain. Things. You need his, his good spoken, good hearted nature. I will Invasion. say that in Phantom Menace, there's like just a few more so than any other movie for me, just characters that are pretty, if you they were not in the movie, you would not necessarily notice it for the story, but they are just so iconic. CO Bibble is one of those characters yeah. where like the amount of like people that can quote, you know, loss of communication can only mean one thing, invasion, or <laughs> we are a democracy, the people have decided, or you know, yes, you know, you must contact me, you know, all of those like lines he doesn't have I, like I say many. that like once a week when someone's like not answering my text or something or or something at work i'm like you must contact me you must contact me. <laughs> chancellor palpatine will need your help like these are he has like what eight lines in the whole yeah. movie but like yeah. each one just pops and <laughs> I feel like there's so many characters like that from phantom minutes you got him i feel like boss nass is one of those characters obviously you know that i love me some Korsh panaka like i love me oh some i love panaka, panaka. So, uh, i almost included him as my co-pilot for this i was like really close <laughs> but i couldn't 
good top hondo for me and also the oh, fact yeah. that panaka becomes like a like a moth and super into the imperial regime kind of a turn off i was a little upset when i so, found that out yeah i mean we're not here to talk about him but i when i read leia princess of alderaan i didn't get the sense he was like loving the empire because i mean he finds out anyways mm-hmm. he seems like he was still a good person at heart but uh I don't know. He's, he's super loyal to the Emperor, but <laughs> anyway, we can do a Panaka episode at some point. Please. Like, there'll be like six people in the world interested <laughs> in watching that. We're two of those people, and so yeah. there's really only four people interested in watching that. <laughs> so, you got Chewie, Stacey Tin, C.O. Bibble. All you have left is your animals person. I like the team. It's rounding out so far. I got Hondo as my co-pilot. Jar Jar is my animal expert. And then I went with weapons next, which means I saved pilot for last, which is a dangerous game to play. But, <laughs> you know, you already picked your pilot, so I can I can go ahead and wait. But who knows if you're going to use another character for something else. Weapons. He loves to blow things up. One might say that the cavalry has now arrived. I, I went say, with I Wrecker. I just went with Wrecker from you know the bad batch and clone force 99 i absolutely love wrecker he is one of my favorite clones of all time the dude loves to blow stuff up and i feel like with my team of hondo so far he's gonna be able to supply weapons for wrecker to blow things up you know so yes. and then with jar jar being on illegally of course <laughs> and with jar jar being a part of this team i also you know know that there's going to be a point in time where to save the group, we're going to have to blow something up because Jar Jar is going to jeopardize the mission at least one or two times. So, and I need someone who is not going to be shy about, you know, anything. And we're talking about, for me, I'm all about theatrics. You know, I, I live for the chaos and the drama. What is more dramatic and theatrical than Wrecker just wanting to drop nukes and bombs every single chance that he gets to blow things up? Like, this is what we're talking about. I know you mentioned Chewie. He's got the Wookiee Bowcaster, which does damage in his own right. He's a great pilot. He, he's great with weapon systems. You know what? I don't care if we get into a dogfight. We can we can die. Give me someone that's going to be able to <laughs> drop the bomb in a way that no one else can, and that is all. That is Wrecker. And that is Wrecker, and that is why I'm going with my man, my clone buddy, Uncle Wrecker from Clone Force ninety nine. Absolutely, and uh, you know, season one of Bad Batch when he uh, gets his inhibitor chip activated when trying to take it out. I mean, he's scary. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a very imposing force. So, I mean, that's it's a great choice. Put him behind the turret of any kind in any ship. I'm, I'm right. trusting that man. I'm, I'm trusting the man. And we also saw him on the ground in some of the training sequences or some of the brief oh, battles. Yeah. Like, the dude can hold his own. He's freaking strong as heck. So, <laughs> yeah, it, it helps being in a genetically enhanced clone that has the, you know, the firepower and the, the muscle, I guess. So, yes, muscle. Wrecker. Wrecker's my guy. I'm all about Wrecker. That is my weapon system. So we're moving on. This was your last pick. You had to go with animals right here. You had to pick your person that's really good with animals. Again, we're trying to transport these cats to sorghum. The separatists are on the lookout for us. I was a little surprised by this one. Not because your person is not super qualified for this role, based on what we know with this person. I will say I was a little surprised in the sense I hadn't really thought of them just because of the timelines and thinking when we meet them. Right. Is, this yeah. is like a little before we actually meet them, but obviously they're alive and, and, and doing things. So you went with our favorite girl. You went with Omega. Omega. So, Omega. so Luke, please tell us why you picked Omega on this mission. Omega. So uh, maybe not super deep inside the Star Wars universe, but. Um, as a pet owner myself, um, and I've been around pets for all my life, uh, you really do have to have just the best, cleanest, um, just most wholesome aura to really get okay. along with animals and uh, get them to show loyal- loyalty to you and mm-hmm. uh, have them obey you. So really, when you're going for someone who has just the most wholesome aura in Star Wars, at least at this time, period if not of all of star wars it's Mm -hmm. omega for me um she is just someone who is a very calming presence um 
and she's going to get along with anyone on the ship. She gets along with people trying to kill her, like Fennec, Shand, and I mean, she's not trying to kill her, but all these bad people that she encounters in her life later on, um, mm-hmm. she has no problem just finding the good in someone. And um, okay. I just think you need that kind of, I think you need that skill specifically when you're dealing with cats specifically, because cats okay. are mean sometimes maybe very a lot temperamental of times. yeah they're very temperamental and so for you to be uh very forgiving or um uh, just very patient with them okay. i think she's gonna i think she's gonna do well with these animals specifically okay you, you didn't mention though i feel like the the hardest or the, the biggest sell for omega and it's how she took like the bloodhound batcher from when she's a tantus you know like a batcher exactly is, is like a trained killer dog and she turns Batcher into this benevolent like house dog that you would just come up and it would just come like Batcher would come up and and just bury you know their face in your lap but ultimately be fiercely loyal for Omega like exactly. in the moments where we yeah. saw so like that's that's another reason why Omega would be a great choice for animals and so I Definitely. I'm actually I'm surprised I didn't think of Omega I was just thinking like I guess I just didn't I guess in 20 BBY, we know that Omega's around. I guess part of me was, well, we don't meet Omega t- until after, you know, 20 BBY yeah, until so later. So I didn't even think about going. Well, she might not be on top of her game on this mission, but she's she's solid already. So this would be pre-training, like pre-squad training Omega. But, yeah. but in terms of like Omega being able to connect with people and connect with things, like that's something that is not training there. based. Yeah. That's just there. Yeah. That's just innate to her character. Yeah, I think so too. I think it's just kind of innate in her. Mm-hmm. So she's gonna be she's gonna be solid. All right. So last pick in the draft. I went with my pilots. Obi Wan Kenobi. Now, maybe I have to sell people on this. We know that Obi Wan does not like flying. He is very clear he does not like flying. It's a running joke in the Star Wars universe and in the Star Wars fandom about Obi-Wan not liking flying. That's not to say Obi-Wan isn't a great pilot. He is a Jedi. He has pilot starfighters and crazy formations. He is a very talented pilot. Just because he doesn't want to do it doesn't mean he's not going to. I'm going to tell Obi-Wan, exactly. get, your, get your rear end in the ship. You're piloting the ship. I don't care if you are uh, unhappy about it. I am taking over for Yoda as the Grand Master of the Council for a minute. I'm telling you what you need to do. All right. <laughs> so why wouldn't Obi-Wan want a little bit of a break from the action to just be like, I'm going to go, you know, take these cats to Sorghum. Now you, Luke may say, you know, on a ship with Wrecker, Jar Jar and Hondo might not be a relaxing break from the war. The war might be a little bit uh, better sounding than that, but yeah, here is why Obi-Wan was the perfect pilot for this team. He has connections with Hondo. He's one of the few people, few Jedi True. that have an like, actual relationship with Hondo, given what happened. You know, Hondo later says that one of his best friends was a Jedi. And, you know, I would assume he's talking about like Obi-Wan or like even like maybe Anakin or something because of the times that they spent uh, together. I'm assuming like Obi-Wan, right? And yeah. so there's a relationship there. Obviously, Hondo doesn't really have. Well, he's, he's just a pirate. But I think there is a level of respect that Hondo has for Obi-Wan and in terms of like, okay, we'll work together to get the job done. Obviously, Obi-Wan and Jar Jar have a relationship going back, you know, a long time from the days of the famous. So Obi-Wan understands, one, what Jar Jar is capable of on the good and the bad. So he's going to be prepared yeah. for those situations. He's also one of the most... He, patient jedi probably in the entire order to have trained anakin skywalker so i mean he's got to have the and patience, patience, patience there <laughs> and of course he's a jedi so the jedi and clones have a tremendous bond at this point in time this is yeah you know order 66 so they have a tremendous bond wrecker obviously is different from all the other clones because he's not one of the regs but at the same time wrecker is going to respect obi-wan he is probably the most compliant of you know, the bad batch in terms of following orders, he's gonna, he's probably gonna do that. It's the others that kind of are more of the the decision makers. So Wrecker is gonna be like, I'll fall in line with what Obi-Wan is is telling me on this mission. So I feel feel really good about that yeah. group of four. 
And I feel like Obi-Wan is the straw that like stirs the drink for this group. Like he's the, he's the glue that's going to hold this all together. And without him, I think this whole thing falls apart. So that's why I was like crossing my fingers. Like, please do not pick Obi-Wan on your team. <laughs> Because if Obi-Wan goes, like my other pilot that I was thinking about was like the only other person I thought of that might be able to be patient enough, calm, cool, and collected enough to pull this off was Plo Koon. Yeah, um, he's a good choice too. So do you have any... Um, actually, we'll get to that in a second. Let's go ahead and round this out. So Luke, here's what your team looks like. Weapons, Chewie. Okay. Pilot, Stacey Tin. Co-pilot, C.O. Bibble. And your animal expert is Omega. That's quite the crew. Yeah, it's quite the crew. Yeah, what very, are your final thoughts like, on your crew? Now, I think fully yours assembled. definitely like flows together. Well, there is like a common thread that you just walked us through about how they kind of all will get along. I don't think any of these people have ever been in the same room together on screen. Um, <laughs> I don't maybe, think but they have. probably not. No, probably there's no not. way. So, Unless, um, well, oh, yes, they have. Sacy Tim was on Naboo in the Phantom Menace for like the ceremony at the end when Seal Bibble, they were all standing in yes. line. Now, they probably didn't, yes. they might not have spoken to each other, but they were on screen <laughs> together. There, there is a point in time where they are in the same scene. And from that day on, they formed a very strong <laughs> friendship. <laughs> so um, they're, they're connecting think, via the hollow net every week, you know? Yeah. I think from, I think. It's Sorry, a very well, eclectic well, group of people. Stacey Tin ignores C.O. Bibble. C.O. Bibble, you must contact <laughs> you me. You must contact me. <laughs> All right. I think it's going, a very going. eclectic group of people. Um, I think they're going to learn. They might even not get along so well together in the uh, beginning, but I think as the group goes on uh, throughout this flight, throughout this hyperspace journey, um, mm -hmm. they're going to get along fine. They're going to be okay. They'll they'll get the job done and it's not going to be pretty. <laughs> Here's like two pros that I'm going to go with this team. Two pros. One, Chewy and Omega, I feel like would be a dream team. I feel like those oh, two yeah. are going to be a dream team together. Like absolute dream team. Second thing I would say is in terms of variety of perspectives, you might have the biggest variety of perspectives because you have like an aged seal people who's like an older, been around for a while, Jedi yeah. master, a Wookiee, and you have a child. Like a child. you have like literally <laughs> like all the ranges of perspectives, which can be a really good thing in yeah. terms of something. Here's the two cons. You better hope you don't run into any Sith Lords on this journey because you know your Jedi Master is not holding up like for a second. Um, Probably not. <laughs> and then you have to wonder if C.O. Bibble, if he's going to like in his elderly age at this point, is he going to just like blow up at some point trying to communicate with Chewie like, you know. Or Omega is like talking to him one more time and he just, you know, busts one. He's just done. Yeah. Like he's just like, I'm done. He that's that's only, like only the, the only two cons that I could see. Other than that, I, I feel like we're in a great spot. Yeah. So I feel I feel good about it. And yeah, I think they'll I think they'll all get along. They'll complete this mission. So hey. last group, last one time. Chewy Weapons, CC 10, CO Bibble, Omega. That's the group. My my team. Hondo is the co-pilot, Jar Jar with the animal expert, Wrecker with weapons, and Obi-Wan as the pilot, okay? Like I said, I tried to, like, pull together, like, a genuine connection point for all of my team. Like, I needed, like, some sort of common bond, and obviously that's manifested in Obi-Wan. If Obi-Wan's not there, this team kind of falls apart. I will say to, to another pro that this team has, I think, is, you know, if we were watching this as an episode... I feel like entertainment value is off the charts here. Like in terms of like the amount of the, the amount of variables that exist for this group on this mission. I think when you thrust people like Hondo and Jar Jar into something like the number of variables just go up. Now the oh, first, yeah. the first con for this group is the number of variables that exist <laughs> for if this mission can be completed. So there's that. And then you have to wonder at some point is enough, enough, for Obi-Wan, where he just can't take it anymore. Would this mission put him <laughs> over the top? 
And he just says, I'm not coming back from this. And then, you know, the Jedi fall much sooner. And then, you know, Luke doesn't have a person to watch over him. And Leia doesn't oh have gosh. someone to save her. Because, oh my because Char Char and Hondo were just too much for Obi-Wan at the same time. Completely mm -hmm. alters the course of this entire cinematic universe, really. Yes, Palpatine actually reigns forever. He reigns supreme forever. <laughs> it never ends. He just he just always reigning. We're about to watch the acolyte, and it's about how Palpatine ultimately rises to power for hundreds of years. Uh, the sequel trilogy is just about Palpatine sitting around eating popcorn because there's nothing else. So, yeah. So in the comments, uh, tell us what you think. So Luke has Chewie, Stacey Tin, Co Bibble, and Omega. I went with Hondo, Jar Jar, Wrecker, and Obi Wan. Let us know what you think of our teams in the comments put together your specific group for your mission go for remember it. the year is 20 bby eventually some of these episodes like we have every month we might have one where it's like this is a basic mission like there is no time attached you could pick people from any era or but a lot of times we're going to try to stick to these little eras because it's fun to mix and match and and do all of this like luke likes dungeons and dragons and we're both like super nerdy people so this is kind of like a fun little every once yeah. in a while we come together and just do these fun little tra fantasy drafts like missions i don't know i just think fantasy it's a fun thing. drafts <laughs> exactly uh so luke uh thanks for hopping on and this was a good time as always. This is our first mission of the month here in June. Can't wait to bring you more. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Please give us a follow or a five-star review on Apple, Spotify. Leave us some comments. Let us know what you think. Build your own team. We want to know what you have uh, to say. And we will see you all next time for Light and Life, everyone.